If you're looking to succeed as a Canva designer, then these 10 tips I'm about to share with you is everything you need to know to be able to separate yourself from the crowd and also make you special to your clients. So if you're ready, look, I think you should just dive straight into it. Hey everyone, Benjamin here, a verified Canva expert based in Ghana. If this is your first time on this channel, subscribing would be a good idea and I'm sure that would be one of the best things you can do this year. And if you're an OG, massive respect, I truly appreciate you for the continued support. So I think what we can do to dive into the most interesting tips is clearing the most basic tip out of the way. And tip number one is master the interface. So I believe the first thing every Canva designer should know is understanding the Canva interface. This would make it very easy for you to set up some important things, for example, your brand kits which would include your logo colors and um some font if you have just so that when you're designing in canva it's very easy to pick things up and apply it to your design and the other thing is when you are able to understand the interface it helps you find certain features easily for example some text effects some you know the door tones some apps you'd want to be using in canva some styles some template you can be able to find all of these things easily when you understand the interface and tip number two is master the art of designing from scratch and if i'm being completely honest i believe this is what has shot me to this stage because I always love to design from scratch. So I believe that for every Canva designer, if you really want to become a pro, one of the things you should be so comfortable with is designing from scratch. And don't worry, I know Canva comes with so many pre-designed templates you always want to work with. But look, designing from scratch actually gives you that design freedom to be able to express yourself through your designs. And once you can get comfortable with that, it makes it very easy customizing any template at all you'd find in Canva. And tip number three is maintaining control. Consistency. If you really, really want your design to have a professional, cohesive or whatever look you're looking for, I think one of the things that can really help you as a Canva designer is maintaining consistency. And when we talk of maintaining consistency, we are looking at sticking to some specific things. For example, how many fonts are you using in your design? How many colors are you using in your design? What's the look you're looking for? Is there a color scheme you're working with? You should be able to stick to these things to be able to give your design a recognizable look when anyone sees it because this would really help help to make your design a memorable one for your client and for your audience as well. And to maintain consistency, there are some key things I always do in my designs. The first thing is stick to at most two fonts in my design, use a consistent color palette throughout my designs, and also stick to a particular design style or theme. This makes it very easy for me to be consistent in my design. And tip number four is mastering the use of layers. Understanding how layers work is so essential because if you really want to create complex and dynamic designs, this is one of the things you want to consider because it really helps you to organize and manipulate each element you have on your design without affecting other elements. So for example, with this design, if I wanted to manipulate this element, for example, what I'll just need to do is to right click, go into layers and just choose that particular layer. Then I can continue by applying any effect or making any adjustment on that particular element. And this is how layers gets to work inside of Canva. Tip number five is evoke color psychology when using colors if you didn't know then let me just let you know color psychology is an important aspect of design that can greatly impact the perception and effectiveness of your design because look you wouldn't want to see any design that just has any sort of color just thrown at it this will actually make it known to you that whoever designed that look they didn't really know what they were doing so you'd always want to make sure that you are very intentional on the colors you're using especially if you know the feel and the emotions you want to drive to your audience or the viewer so before you choose colors to your designs there are two things you should always have in mind the first thing is what emotions are you looking at driving to the viewer and the second thing is how do you want them to feel after looking at your design because Every color can evoke certain emotions and perceptions when used on a design. And I'm sure by looking at these two designs, there are two different feelings they are driving at you. So this should just let you know that before you make your next design, ensure that you understand color psychology and also have a fair amount of information concerning each color so that you can be able to um, evoke certain emotions into your viewer. So let's take a look at these examples. We have warm colors and we have cool colors. If you are to look at warm colors, these are colors like red, yellow, and orange and they always create a sense of excitement okay and we also have warm colors like blue purple and green which can really create a sense of calmness and relaxation <coughs> you want some water look my throat is always aching me and uh, just to cut this in i have a link in the description box below that should lead you to canva pro for free if you're on the free version of canva and also to my workshop recordings plus my free templates in canva 
All right, so then what is step number? So, uh, all right, then what is it? And okay, so let's look at tip number six, working with shortcuts. So look, to really improve your efficiency in Canva, I just believe so much to my heart that using shortcut is one of the best things that can help you to design quickly in Canva. So make it a point to familiarize yourself with the available shortcut in Canva. And I use this always, especially, I'm sure, I'm sure you'd find that in my tutorials if you get to follow me. True and... Yeah, that's pretty true. Look, instead of now clicking, 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 just two buttons at most can make you achieve certain things that would have involved multiple clicks and you wouldn't want to be wasting so much seconds when it comes to that. So let's just look at a few examples I have. So for example, the Alt key on your keyboard will pull up a square shape instead of going to element and searching for a square shape. The T key on your keyboard will pull up text, Control D to duplicate, Control G to group element, and also Control plus the square brackets you know whether the opening or the close one would either move your element backwards or bring it forward and i just hope these basic tips are some of the tips you can just familiarize yourself with so that you can at least start speeding up your design process when you're making anything in canva tip number seven is good use of typography so when we say typography what is typography so this has to do with the text you know how you work with text inside of canva and this is the crucial rule on how to convey any message in your design to a viewer so when you're making any design just make sure that any text you are using is conveying the message clearly and it's also enhancing the whole um, aesthetic of your design and before you can do this effectively there are two things you'd want to consider number one is consider the purpose of your design and the second thing is consider the audience you are targeting so for example if you are to take a look at this particular design which is for a law firm you realize that the purpose of the design has to do with a law firm and the target audience will be people like lawyers will be people like parliamentarians or anyone who just falls under the law industry i just hope i'm correct about how i mentioned it law industry <laughs> and i think i should just pass this out before you are using any text make sure the text is legible which also means it's easy to read because you wouldn't want to for example have a script font as your body text because that can really really be difficult to read when it's a whole chunk of text you wouldn't want to do that you rather want to consider maybe a serif or a sans serif font so just keep that in mind because i'm sure you actually need them later on and yes tip number eight which is file types so after you've made your design in canva there is one point you'd always come to which is which format should you download your design as or which file type you should choose to download your design and these are important things you should know because it's crucial that you're maintaining the quality of your design and ensuring that your design is compatible with the intended use so for example if i design maybe a carousel in canva there are so many formats but the format i always go for is png this is because png preserves the quality of the image even if it's coming with a background or without a background you are still able to preserve that quality you get it if you don't get it, forget about it. And another file type you always see is also SVG, which means scalable vector graphics. Okay, and this is best for websites. So let's say you are coming up with some graphics for your website. You can design that in Canva, but when you are downloading them, make sure to download them as SVGs. We also have JPEG, we have MP4 for videos, we have um, PDF if it's a document you are creating. And you can also, there are so many formats actually in Canva. We have the PowerPoint ones and look, just make sure you are sure of the format you're looking for even before you start making your design in Canva so that when you get to that point you just know what you are going to choose and my tip number nine would be importing designs this is one of my favorite things to do in Canva especially when I have to design a new um, carousel I always do not start from scratch because I've created a template that makes it easy for me to avoid designing from scratch I know it's good to design from scratch but you should always have your templates because there are times when you'll be making another version of the particular design and just to avoid maybe doing double work or starting from scratch what you can do is you can just easily import these designs into canva and what you can do is once you have your blank canva open you just make sure you are looking for projects okay and in project you'd have a search bar which can help you search for the particular design you'd want to import into your current designs and this should actually make it so easy for you to just you know customize things and continue from there so i think it's fair to say that just take note of certain designs you keep making over and over again and just create a template for them so that it's very easy to import them into a current one and you know just build on from there so that you don't always have to start designing from scratch at least for certain designs and my 10 tip or tip 10 is stay updated and keep learning look 
Canva keeps coming up with new features, design trends keep coming, new design trends keep coming up and you wouldn't want to miss out as a Canva designer because once you miss out on these, you are always missing out on important things you can use to impress your client or even your audience if you create content, okay? So you'd want to keep up with, you know, some of the verified Canva extra because these are people who constantly get to be updated with the new features in Canva even before it gets to be rolled out. So for example, you can just my community as i have because i get to update my people on some of the new features to expect in canva so make sure you are staying updated especially with things coming up in canva and also with design trends just so you can impress the audience and your clients so i hope you found this video helpful if you did the video on the screen right now is a video i would want you to watch because it's a plus of what i've been explaining here and if you want more exclusive resources make sure you're checking in the description box below to find every resource i have for free. The name is Benjamin Osh. Remember, there is no limit to creativity and I should